I don't pretend this video to be a full comprehensive classification because types of touch that I will present in this video are only those ones that I use really a lot. But there are a lot of different uh, classifications and different systems. So please don't treat this video as the one and only way to classify the types of touch. So let's start from a regular non legato. It's very simple. So basically you just release the finger before you hit the next key. And what is important, you try to hit the key vertically. So the motion goes straight down to the bottom of the key. Then you might see portato quite often is when you have a slur over a group of notes with dots under the slur. And there are two types of providing this portato that I, having no better uh, term, would uh, call like portato pull and portato push. So what the difference? When you use a portato pull, it's like moving your finger towards yourself. So in order to master this kind of touch, you might hit the note and then slide on it towards yourself. Now, of course, you will minimize that uh, while actually playing. So, so this pulling movement would be almost not noticeable. And what is also very important, you always try to use the wrist to bounce a little bit. So basically the difference with non legato is that you apply more weight and try to kind of massage the key. Portato push is a bit different. Just imagine that you gently push piano uh, from yourself. And in order to master this kind of touch, you might hit the key and slide it out. <laughs> then of course you would minimize that movement and then tenuto is very similar to portato actually the only difference in my understanding between those two is that when you play portato you release the finger in a quite controlled manner so you applied some weight and you use your wrist to bounce a little bit but then you finish the sound quite rapidly. But for tenuto you do the same thing, but instead of releasing your finger, you pull away the wrist while the finger wants to stay in the key longer. So you see the end of the sound will be actually smoother. You would be able to hear this kind of diminuendo on each sound because the damper covers the string slower. Then tenuto and legato would be when you make the same thing but release the key only when you already hit the next one. So. <laughs> classical legato is very appropriate for classical and baroque music, so it's really frequent and appropriate for pieces uh, by Mozart, Bach, uh, Haydn, uh, whatsoever. So in this type of legato you release the finger exactly when you hit the next note. For romantic legato, that is more appropriate for romantic music like Chopin, Debussy, Brahms and so on, you release the finger slightly later, making the sounds slightly overlap. So in the slow motion it would be like faster tempo it would be like so you see there's always this short moment of overlapping when we hear seconds actually the only danger here is that if you hold these fingers too long then you will have too many notes that overlap and that will sound not really nicely so we have to take care about that and 
control that we overlap the sounds but not too much though. Now this type of legato we might also divide into legato push when you move your fingers further in the key. And usually it helps to flatten the finger a little bit so they are not as curled as for classical legato. So for classical legato I would use that kind of shape and for romantic push legato I would use that kind of shape. Romantic legato pull is when you pull your fingers as a fortenuto pull. Then we have a bunch of different ways to play staccato actually. So we might use just fingers for finger staccato. The very important thing about staccato is just to release fingers immediately. In order to master this way of staccato, produced only by your fingers, you might actually hold your fingers on the key in a more or less flattened way and then just curl your fingers really quickly, like that. Staccato with your wrist might give you uh, actually a stronger sound. What I would recommend here for this kind of staccato is to use not just down up movement of your wrist but also use rotational elements. So for at least these three fingers you might actually not just pull your wrist like that because that causes tension but you actually can rotate your hand a little bit on the right and then rotate it back. For weaker fingers like 4 or 5, if you play in a comfortable spot, for example here, a comfortable spot for my right hand, I might rotate the hand slightly like counterclockwise. This is actually what I do very often for my fifth finger. I, I'm not just raising the hand vertically, but I rather rotate my hand and then use that kind of uh, motion. For this type of staccato we try to maintain a stable form, stable position of fingers having enough support in the knuckles and using the wrist to hit the keys. Then staccato with the forearm is even more a uh, powerful one and is used mostly in modern music like Prokofiev, Ligeti and so on. So for that type of staccato you use that motion and it might be actually very rough. It works not as good for scales of course but for chords it works actually uh, very well. Then staccato in baroque music it's a special topic actually I'm not going to go into much details here but traditionally we believe that staccato in baroque music should be treated differently as in, in for example romantic or, or modern music because this staccato in baroque music doesn't just make the note and doesn't obviously make the note sharp it rather makes the note shorter so for example if you have quarters Let's, uh, let's imagine that those are my quarters. Staccato under the quarters would actually mean that I have to play just eight notes. So I shorten the length of the quarter in half. So instead of I would play so you see it's not exactly sharp, it's just shorter. What is very important for this uh, staccato is that I have to end the sound in a very precise way. So I'm not doing something like tenuto. I release the finger immediately, so I try to make the damper to cover the string as fast as possible. And this sharp ending of the sound gives an impression of staccato. And the last one for today is glissando style playing when we don't actually reach the bottom of the keys. 
Now, of course, usually I teach people always try to reach the bottom of the key and to have enough support in order to control things better and in order to play without tension uh, using safe technique. But sometimes we have to play very lightly, like, like that. For example, uh, in Debussy, there are a lot of such spots or some leggero spots in Chopin when he writes small notes or when he writes leggero. So in, for this type, we need to find a very special, very light touch. So you don't try to reach the bottom of the key as we usually do in most of cases, but you try to kind of move further before you reach the bottom. <clears throat> so for that you have to develop a lot of uh, sensitivity on your fingertips and always try to move your hand further. Don't really stuck in the vertical position, but play it in a more horizontal way. So that's it for today. I hope you find it useful and see you next time.